shows that make you laugh, shows that make you think, music that moves you. It could only be one place. Universal Broadcasting Network. Tune in at ubnradio.com. The Marla and Dave Radio Experience begins in three, two, one. Now, if you're ready, we will begin. Welcome to the Marla and Dave Radio Show. This is reality radio with a couple that keeps it real. Current events, pop culture, music, relationships, fitness, the hot topics of the day. Marla and Dave Thomas. This is the Marla and Dave Radio Show. Real radio. Turn it up! Welcome to the Marla and Dave Show. We are so tripping right now. Hey, what was that movie with Queen Latifah? You got me all what? You got me all something. Twisted up in the game, boo. With Steve Martin. We are completely anyway, twisted up in the game, boo. I'm laughing super hard today because this is this is the essence of marital madness. Why am I even wearing these glasses? What am I even doing here? <laughs> Here's the thing. Wait, Tony, look. I can't even find the battery let me too much. Let, t- let me tell you the problem. Oh, when you Lord. play, let me tell you the problem. When you play games with boys, David and Tony, are, you call it a boy. I'm just calling. I'm, I'm talking about men, boys to men. <laughs> uh-huh. Get it? Nice. Play on nice. words. What's up, everybody? I'm nice. Marla. I don't know what I'm doing here today, but I know I've been married for a hell of a long time. <laughs> That's the show. Well, Marla, since I, we don't have our clocks running today. We are going to so have so much freaking fun. This is going to be a fun. very interesting show. Marla, but you can look over my shoulder and actually see the clock. So well, you, you have can kind of keep us somewhere in. I don't really give a rat about the clock, Dave. That's your issue. Tony, you want to pass me that clock? It doesn't work. <laughs> Thank you very much. Oh, well, Thank you very much. Anyway, Thank welcome everybody much. today to the Marlon Dave Show. Um, you know, we this is this show is going to be reminiscent of our original days of Marlon and Dave relationship CPR, where everybody's like, "Oh, you're going to save our relationship," and my answer to you is, "No, I'm not," because you can only save yourself. That's really the truth of the matter. Yeah, yeah. and you we were never actually. Uh, I'm not a therapist. Therapist or anything like that. We were just sharing our hey, experiences. I have a question to to you and to the audience and to everybody else. Is 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 therapize? Is that a word to therapize somebody? To ther therapize? 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 To therapize? I have to look that up. I think it Off is. Off the top of my head, I would say no. So what? Yeah, that's a therapize big. Therapize as a verb. Off the no. top of your head means it's law. Have you seen yourself in the mirror? Anyway. Um, <laughs> Wow. Well, I'm too tired to come back to that. I'm just, Tony, are those jumbo headphones that you have to fit over the... Yeah. <laughs> wow. <They're> hilarious. <laughs> That's twice two for me. Yeah, well, good thing they're tight. They can keep your hair on. Anyway, so... Uh, <laughs> one. Did he just give a weave slam? <laughs> That's one. Anyway, um, today we want you guys to call in. Today we're talking about... Marriage. We want to answer marital myths. Marital myths, and we really want to talk. We See why wanna, I said that myths. We want to answer any question that you have, and we really want to talk to people who are thinking about marriage, who are misconceived about marriage, who um, have come out of marriages and may want to go into a marriage next time with a different mindset, a different paradigm. People who are married person. who say therapize. You know, we want to talk about that. Here's a question I want to ask to that I want you guys to get ready to call after we go through the news. We'll be opening up the phone lines for your calls. But the question today is, fill in this blank. I wish someone would have told me blank before I got married. Hmm. 323-284-7826. I'm going to repeat it. I wish, Dave, that someone had told me blank before I'm going to type that into married. the chat room while you, while you, while you continue to speak. Let's go through our week in review. Since we have unlimited amounts of time, we have no clock around this joint. Let's just talk away. Woo! I feel like I've been gotten a new lease on life. Anyway, um, let's talk about tennis for a minute. If anybody has not um, is not aware and you're not a tennis fan, but you want to know how we set our tennis clocks, we set our tennis clocks in quarters. So there's four majors. Tony looks very interested. I love it. 
there's four majors um, in every year. The first major of every year is in January, and it's the Australian Open, which is played in Australia, because essentially the tennis majors chase the weather. So wherever it's warm, then it kind of flows that way. So we go to Australian Open, and then we change surfaces in the, in the late spring, which is the end of May, and immediately two weeks later, we go, that's clay, which is the French Open. We go from clay to grass, which is Wimbledon, which everybody is the most, you know, that's one of the most notorious uh, and well-known tournaments. And then as well as we end the season in, in majors in the U.S. Open, which is in Flushing Meadows, New York. Oh, wow, Marley, you're on top of it. And the Setathon, which is a little bit more local, which is also becoming a classic. <laughs> yeah, that's over right there on uh, in Woodland Hills. Woodland Hills. Yeah, that's played in Woodland Hills. Right, the Mad Setathon, <laughs> where last um, the last week Marla was victorious by um, essentially can I, can I just say kicking something? Dave's butt. No, Marla, before you talk, Marla, let me before finish. Marla started winning, she never liked to post scores and stuff like that. She starts winning a couple of uh, sets, and now next thing you know, she wants to post all the time when she wins. Well, you had a chance to post when I wasn't winning, but you didn't. So I, 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 I didn't jumped need on to. the moment. I didn't want to. I didn't want to brag. It, okay. You know, that's this is because supposed you to be a that gentleman last. sport. So gentleman anyway, and lady. Yeah, this is not about you know. Anyway, Marla's losing this week. It's not about lasting in the bed. It's about lasting on the court. And guess who isn't? So, therefore, this week is true. Dave has one set on me, but the score is very close, 6-4. I'm beating you like 6-2. No, that's not That's not six sets to four sets. No, six games. That's, that's, that's one set, that's a set that score. I've won and zero sets Sandra that you've Hawkins won. Sandra Hawkins is the scorekeeper, and she's here. So don't get crazy because she will bust you down. Sandra, I hope you have that. Marla, zero, Dave, one for the um, week. I also, you know. And I asked her if she wanted to play again. She said no. And not in the same day. Will mm-hmm. I'll hit you again tomorrow, boo. Don't be on point. Just be on deck. Something will come up. Anyway, <laughs> should have a good excuse. Anyway, um, moving on. Uh, I we were in the studio with boys to men. What, are you, what, what, what were you about to say? Go ahead. No, you we were in the studio. With, well, go ahead. No, you finish. <laughs> you finish. I thought that's what you were about to say. I wasn't, I, but it's okay. You go ahead because mine is. Tech Six was in the studio with boys to men. Do you have anything real to report though, like uh, a song what? to share? Yeah, a thousand miles away. Where is it? Can we hear it? No, you can't hear okay. it yet. It's still being mixed. Moving on. So, oh, wow. if there's nothing to hear, Oh, that's then not important? <laughs> it's so important. Can you next time bring us some music? What is wrong? You're in, you are the man that can actually you give us You always want to bring stuff up before it's time. I, it's it like already a, happened. It's like a fine wine. You have to just put it in the bottle and let it sit there for a while. But when you open it, mmm. Can you guys see my face? That's what I have to deal with. Anyway, um, you know, Dave, what, there's some things about grooming. Like, you have to have a, you have to get your hair cut at, you know, every so often. Like, every, what is it, every two weeks or you just feel out of sorts, right? Yeah, for me, it's about two weeks. I am a nail fanatic. And so, Tony, can you put a picture up? Um, this, this is a picture that you're about to view or are viewing um, of my current nail job. Now, the thing is. What? Dave, this is this is my week in review. This lady. Oh, this is the Marla show. This lady. <laughs> okay, here we go. <laughs> this lady is in North Hollywood, and she's so talented that it's spooky. And if you don't believe me, check out her Instagram. Her name is Chris, and it's sealed with a Chris K R I S nails. And she this this threw me off all the way around oh, the block. Oh, like sealed with a kiss. Okay. Right. She had <clears throat> threw me off for a minute. A yeah. lady come in what? there who wanted to have. She does embedding. The lady wanted glass embedded in her nail. So Chris said, "I'm not breaking the mirror. You go break it and bring the broken mirror in." And the lady broke it, and wow. she covered it in acrylic. And the glass is actually between the nail and the acrylic. It, crazy. So what? remember, remember, we want you to answer the question. I wish someone would have told me blank before I got married. 323-284-7826. We'll be right back. You're listening to the Marla and Dave Radio Show on the Universal Broadcast Network. Current events. It's pop culture. The hot topics of the day. It's time for Mad News, Mad News. on the Marla and Dave Radio Show. Ladies and gentlemen, Marla and Dave. What's popping in okay. Here's what's popping in this week's news. You had to scream um, that out. Here's what's popping. 
Well, there was a windstorm. You didn't hear that? Yeah. Bob, behind us, the wind is blowing. What? Anyway, I don't even know, guys. <laughs> can I just ask? Wow. Them, can I ask for free forgiveness today? <laughs> I'm telling you, I woke up. Here's what's in the news. I don't even know who the hell I am today. I, I, my energy levels are crazy. Neither do I. <sighs> well, I know why, but you don't want to hear that. Anyway, police took David. a stray pig into custody. Are you kidding me? Outside this is, of are you kidding me? a Detroit area home. Yes. What Dave is saying is actually true. Thursday <laughs> evening <laughs> at this lady's house, there was a pig who essentially, it's like an assault. The pig chased her down. She called the police and the police. Just is, a random pig. Just a big fat pig from hmm. next door. And um, it says that it chased her into her front yard before apparently getting distracted by a decorative ball. Pigs are so easily distracted. They must have ADHD. Anyway, <laughs> um, Debbie Rymaker, Macker, uh, told them that, that she was doing yard work and in, in Macomb County, it, which is a Shelby township, when the pig just came barreling at her. Chased her around the yard before it got distracted, and then the police were called, and the pig is shown in the back seat, apprehended by the police. Hmm. And I would think that they would send animal control, but to just let the police arrest Dude, the pig. Dude, it's a township. It probably that's all that is. It's probably animal it's control. It's outside of Detroit. You, you it, can't say a township. I'm just saying that. <laughs> I mean, you know, way they, out outside of Detroit. Right. Maybe. They, how many pigs <laughs> do you know on Eight Mile? That's what I'm saying. Anyway, <laughs> wow. Other than at a barbecue <laughs> spot. Uh, you almost said something that I could have gotten in trouble for. But anyway, uh, of <gasps> course, the main thing in the news is all about, is it Bruce Jenner? Is it Caitlyn Okay, her Jenner? name is Caitlyn. She's made, he has now changed the pronoun officially to she. Um, if you take a look at the picture, for those of you who might have your head completely buried in the sand, um, the, the big coming out uh, event has now happened. Bruce Jenner, who said, when I'm ready, I will, you will meet her, is what she told uh, uh, Diane Sawyer. You'll meet her when it's time. Well, was it a she talking when it was a he. she said there was he at that time? It was okay. he. Yeah. He said, well, he said okay. you will meet her when it's time. Okay. So the time, which da, at da, least da, it's, da. you know, the thing about it is, uh, there, this story is, is, it has so many facets because... It's interesting that the Kardashians keep time by Benjamins. Clearly their clock is Benjamin because <laughs> that is what it is. The, if you see this picture, basically nothing is free with with them. I no announcement. I don't see how you can get Caitlyn's face out of Bruce's face, to be honest with well, you. Well, Bruce has been I mean, going through real. micro adjustments for a very long time. When everybody used to joke about the changing of his face, the two he was faces already side by side. Though it's still like what? But, but from back in the day, is it just me? Well, well, here's a question I have for you. I want Tony to turn his mic on. First of all, I owe Tony. Well, we only a, got one minute left, so a you couple gotta be of quick. co-hosting. Uh, but Tony and Dave, yes. When you see Caitlyn, just as pictured with all the airbrush and the extra and all the special, does this look like, on a scale of one to ten, rate her? As a beautiful woman, beautiful. I think it's beautiful. Would you would she would you turn by your head on the picture. street? That's what I'm I, by the picture. Well, yeah. of course you remember be. she's six two. So yeah, because in the there one there's one yeah. picture so where she's Leslie. in a chase lounge, <laughs> yeah. and the face is all nice, and you got the body, and then you go down, and it still has Bruce's feet. Okay, here's another quick question, <laughs> Dave. Ah, I'm sorry. I'm just keeping it real. Here's here's another keep it real. <laughs> when you guys look at that picture, and we'll 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 finish with this, is his penis gone, tucked, or taped in that photo? What oh. would you say in the picture? Yeah, do you it's see still it's, there. The, it's it, still there? And and the, the transgender surgery. community says that the genitalia doesn't make the. Gender. I'm not asking that. I just want to know where it went in the picture. Which is strange to me, anyway. I'm looking at the picture. It's tucked. It's like you know. Do you insert? Do you tuck and insert, or do you tape and and smooth? That's a lot of work. <laughs> anyway, of work. anyway, we're gonna get back to the show. <laughs> the Marla and Dave Radio Experience begins in three, two, one. Now, if you're ready. We will begin. Welcome to the Marla and Dave Radio Show. This is reality radio with a couple that keeps it real. Current events, pop culture, music, relationships, fitness, the hot topics of the day. Marla and Dave Thomas. This is the Marla and Dave Radio Show. Real radio. Now, Marla, you know, you were so out of sorts uh, 
at the beginning of the that it, our intro, you forgot what mood you're in. Your mood song, you didn't play any mood Tony, song. Tony, what mood am I in? Hold on. Do you want to know what mood you're in? <laughs> yes, let, tell me, Tony. All right, hold on. I have to reset. So here we go. I don't, I, don't, no, I don't have I think, a mood. I think Tony's having a, an issue today. <laughs> <laughs> Tony and Marla. Can I explain What's something? What's this world coming to? I know. <laughs> hold on. I, I, hold on. I'm going to do this right. All right. Here we go. Ready? Okay. <laughs> For some reason, this thing. There we go. I don't know just who you are. There's a stranger in the house. Took a while to figure out. There's no way you could be who you say you are. Okay. Now, let me tell you. Oh, are you hold talking on. about me? Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> what you trying to say? This is where this is where out of sorts in our house just get stupid. You know, the, I I wish I because I'm really not producing this show, but one of the lines in that song says, "Maybe the stranger is really me." Oh, you just played the wrong section of the song right. because the section that you actually played was really your, just yeah. you know. Well, that, right. I don't know who the hell you are. No, and that's not You're true. You're a stranger. I have to be honest. <laughs> that's not true. Do you, do you want to talk about your mood? Yeah, yeah, Tony, hit me. Did yeah. you just call me abusive? <laughs> no. At the I'm end saying, of the song, it said, stop being abusive. Well, first you of talking all, to me? you know, we're talking about, you know. Are you abused? marital myths and how to keep a marriage going just gotta let it go anyway stuff is going to happen just gotta let it go today stuff always happens today is and yesterday was a day i had to let go is marriage really all that is cracked up to be that's the question and today dave and i are going to really get into the reality of and answering that question after 27 years um of marriage there i don't think there are you know two people that i know of at least in my close proximity that are more qualified to be marital mythbusters, Tony. So I know you deal with the paranormal. We deal with the paramarriage. And uh, now is paranormal and all the just strange? Because is Marla paranormal? I don't, okay. <laughs> yeah. Tony said yes. I don't even know what to do anymore. I I can't get myself oh, back online. Man. But anyway, you know what it is. I think you got somebody else's hair so tight on your head <laughs> that you are literally. <laughs> <laughs> Channeling someone else who had that hair a before blonde? you. <laughs> oh my I'm goodness! I'm just kidding. I'm now just here's the thing. I have the, the first thing is we can honestly say part of a great marriage is being able to actually laugh, which David and I do well. Um, man, <laughs> let's get started. First of all, with Dave, let fill the blank in. Start with filling in the blank for yourself. What is the one thing, or what 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 is it that you wish? What what was the question? Let me ask it again, specifically and succinctly. I wish that someone would have told me blank before I got married. What is that? Um, I had some pretty good advice. So I wish someone would have said, "I'm not even playing. I'm not kidding whatsoever." Now let me back that into the anecdote. Uh, I think probably the best advice I ever got. Two strong pieces of advice. One of them was from. Uh, the president of Warner Brothers in Nashville, Jim Ed Norman. He said marriage, his description of marriage was you will experience the highest highs, so the best emotional high that you can ever feel, as well as the lowest low. The, at, I'm sure those highs for you came in, during sex. Is at, that at, accurate? As, as, no, not always. Uh -huh. uh, <laughs> but as, as bad as you could possibly feel. That's what you'll experience. And I wish he would have said, I'm not even joking. Because you go through those moments as well. And you think, especially when you're young, oh, it's not going to be that bad. I can, I can handle anything. Oh, please, trust me. Well, that's, that's it's youth. It's going to be rough. That is, that is the actual naivete of just being young. Young, is, young means invincible. To me, that's the definition of being young. You, there are no true obstacles. You don't even see an end to your life when you're young. When you're really young, and let me say this as well. This topic today was, a, was something that was inspired late in the week, and it was based on our Ask Marlon and Dave question from, coming in from, from a young person who was wanting to know should they be getting married um, at such a young age. So then I was like, you know what? Let's get back into some real truth relationship talk. 
Mm. And there's a lot of stuff that, you know, I, I there's there's probably 15 things I can think off the top of my head to answer that blank. That, you know, it, is there what is there something I wish someone would have said these basket full of things to me before I got married. Now, Tony Fontana, let me go back in the chat room, had a pretty good one. Um, no, it was Sandra Hawkins. She said um, her answer to the question is she wished someone would have told her to get there. I guess she and her husband, their finances together before they got married. Right. And I think that's a pretty good one. That's a close. That would be my second thing that I would say. I be, would tend to agree. Be as prepared as you can. Um, I, Not before you get married. Right. Before, right. I'm saying Absolutely. you want to have yourself in a position, you know, to be able to be settled and straight before you grow this big conglomerate of, of need. Because it's expensive. Families are expensive. No ifs, ands, and buts about it. And you can't make the same sacrifices when you have children involved that you can make as an adult saying, we want to get from point A to point B. This is what we're going to do. Cut this out. Don't do this. You know, I'm not going to drive here. I'm not going to. You can't really do that. You know, you can't tell your child we're only eating the, the, the orange Fruit Loops out of the Fruit Loop box well, because the, we're trying to actually buy a car. To, to that to that end, um, when our kids would come home to visit, when we were doing the Vaisalis thing, we were really pretty much just eating shakes, <laughs> drinking shakes, and they were like, we need some food. Right. But when your kids are little, you know, a meal is a meal. You're going to have a meal three to four times a day. Right. Period. I cooked uh, an enormous amount um, at that time. It's true. So those are some of the things. Um, one of the things as well, um, I never – the the advice that I would give now, I wish someone had told me specifically um, before you get married, you will be a fool, honestly, to think that you can support others before you actually support yourself. What do you mean support? Um, to give to to become um, to give something to somebody else that you haven't actually established for yourself. Like, in other words, we were so young. That to me, I began to give away everything that I was as a human being, um, and as a woman, before I actually was solidified in my own uh, self direction, accomplishments. You know, I didn't I didn't take care of me before I made the decision to take care of everybody else, which I mm. would say. And that that age is different for everybody. You know, that's mm. just like I, I would say at 19 years old, um, I knew the I took on the responsibility seriously of being a mom without and a, and a wife without really having all of the tools. So mm. I would say, you know, really know who you are before you start carrying, you know, this responsibility for others. And that that that's mm. a because I think that that you know as we as we talk about and really unfold the whole marriage situation, it one of the questions is at what age do you think um that a marriage has its best chance to work? Tony, what do you think? How I think a marriage can work. The no, what, what age? What age? Oh, what, you, age? what age would you recommend to you um, to think that it would be best that this marriage would probably stand the best chance if you got late married? Late twenties and older. Late twenties and older. Yeah, I would say either really young or a, a lot older. Yeah. Yeah. What's a lot older? Uh, like, like your like your winter of life, like where 50s. you just. <laughs> meet like in an 50s. assisted living and just play bridge together and yeah, just die. Yeah, because when you get married really really young, you know you're kind of naive and you know you have to learn and grow together when you get married older i think your expectations are probably a lot more grounded you know what i mean and if when you get married somewhere in the middle like 30s you pretty much had a fixed life and it's pretty hard i would think at least it would be hard for me to to combine that with somebody else's life if well, that makes any sense that's the problem that I'd i be see setting my ways no matter what that that is the problem to me that's the problem between young and old Young is pliable, old is rigid, period. And I don't think that you, I yeah, don't but when think. When you get past a certain age. You're dementia. You don't even know what you're doing at that point. <laughs> you don't even know you're getting married. You're just like, what the heck is this ring, huh? <laughs> Who are you? Every morning you wake up to like 50 first dates. No, I'm saying when you get, when you get to a certain age, it's, it's almost like, uh, you know, my expectations are, well, I'm not trying to you know, make sure that this is the sexiest person on the planet. I'm not trying to make sure that this is the richest person on the planet. You know, I just want a nice companion. I don't even, at a certain age, I'm not even looking for that much sex. <clears throat> Who what knows age, what, what age, age that, that would actually babe? be? I have absolutely no idea. But what, that, 
we're going to get into all of that too. We're going to get into that because I, you know, and and we don't even need to wait to ask that question. What? It, that's one of the that goes under the myth category to me. That what? your sexual habits. A lot of people don't get married for that reason, and a lot of people get married for that reason. Sex is a big driver for marriage. Really? Oh, you would, the you Duggars. Get married just to have sex? I wouldn't, because I was having sex before marriage. But, <laughs> and I'm not advocating that, by the way. <laughs> I mean, you know, as this is, you know, we grew up in a in a Christian with a Christian upbringing. So wait, there are pros wait, and cons. Let me stop you. Tony says, Sandra, call in. <laughs> she said, "No, Tony, I don't like to talk." <laughs> 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 That's funny. Uh, no. Anyway, but yeah, no. I mean. Especially nowadays, I don't think anyone would get married just to have sex. Are you kidding? That's almost an old school concept. It happens. Have you been to the Midwest? Uh, yeah. Okay. What I'm and saying people are is, people having sex in the Midwest, Marlon. No, Mother, what, it's, but it's Dave, hard to believe. I know. When you have a really sh- take when care you of the have cows, a really rigid. <laughs> get on the I combine. Just mentioned, I just mentioned the Duggars. Combines like have like an extra I back just, road. I just <laughs> mentioned. I just mentioned the Duggars. Well, what what about the Duggars? What I'm saying is, in that family, they still hold those Judeo those that very strict Christian rigid principle, and and that is it. They, when you when they got they only get married, I mean, they only have sex post marriage. That's what their whole thing is. It's very much you didn't know that. Well, yeah, he got a little messed up with the with the molesting thing. True, but that but that's yeah. what they but that's what they espouse. By the way, after that, then he was cool. <laughs> after you get that in, then <laughs> not a, that I'm making fun a, of that. That's, that's horrible. A, that's but. a horrible. That's a horrible <laughs> example. But it's true. That is what they espouse. Now, whether he went off the wagon and went off base or not, that one Duggar. But there's 21 of them, isn't it? Like 19. Yeah, 19. Okay, so he's one that had a little you know proclivity of an issue, but everybody else. Was that's their thing, and Dave, come on, in your own family, you've had someone you who waited for actual right at the cusp of marriage late in life because they were actually a virgin until then. It happens; those values are out there, especially if it's if it's rooted in a very rigid a person who doesn't want to be rebellious. Can we? Can well, we? Marla, can we even family, say your mom? Oh, my, I'm pretty sure my mom was a virgin before she I'm got married. You, That's why I said old like... school. I said old school. That's my mom. Okay. She's in her 70s. Okay. Okay, that's old school. That's what I mean. But what I'm saying is, I just named some others. What what my point to you is, I'm not sure that it's as old school as it is really a, a particular Judeo-Christian rigid belief. You wait. It, it's It's biblical. Well, we want to We want to ask you guys, the listeners, what is your biggest, what do you think the greatest marital myth is? Something that just isn't true about marriage that people think beforehand going into marriage that, you know, this is going to be great. Oops. Ah. And, I, and I also want to know, is, is marriage just meant for Christians? That's a discussion I would like to actually have. What is wrong with you people that you don't discuss? You don't call in 323-284-7826? <laughs> Marla's going to just ride you. Call us. And put you down until you call in. Call us. I want my she score. She does me all the time. I want so my scorekeeper to. to D- Dave, and look how much I've increased your word count. You're welcome. When I met you, you had like I actually don't talk for 12 the rest words. of the week. Only on Mondays from 6 to 730. I have 90 minutes of speaking. <laughs> and then it's over. Trust. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need you to talk, Dave. I got your back. <laughs> I got the whole thing, and that's that's uh. Well, first of all, what kind of question is is marriage just meant for Christians? I didn't say is it just meant for Christians. It, I did say that. Yeah, you did say that. Is marriage is marriage attached to to Christian belief? Is that only about Christianity, or is it just because if you talk to our children's generation, they're no longer marriage minded the way that we were. Yeah, but even in our generation, there were those that were saying, I'm not going to get married or I'm not going to have kids. And after a while, you do it anyway. But I did. And I think that while they're young, they might say that. Trust me. But I think, you know, a few years, it'll change. You think so? I think so. What because, changes somebody's because marriage, mind? Because marriage uh, predated uh, Christianity. Don't you think? Christianity was a, came along no, later dude, come on. in Earth's history. And people were getting married way before then. Let me explain something to you. If you want to go all the way back, and let's talk about it on a biblical who, level. Who was Adam's wife? They didn't have a piece of paper. What? He just had sex with his wife. So that so there's a lot of married people 
that yeah. are running around here. And, but and the good thing I, about the old days is every time you had sex, that was your wife. <laughs> no matter how many times you did it. That, that, with whoever. That, Oops, up. Oh, got a new wife. <laughs> welcome welcome home, honey. Hence the, hence the age of the harem. <laughs> it's true, but that's, but that's a good point when you talk about um, the design of marriage because let it it is become once once it became part of uh, a legal a legality then to me it shifted um, its whole design it was almost like this piece of paper governed uh, marriage to me marriage is at the base of it all is really a commitment for two people to be together through thick and thin and the paper is where it all went wrong to me because the paper it it, it turned it into ownership. Well, I, on that note, uh, there's someone in in our chat room. Nicole is basically saying she's not married and she doesn't plan to get married. You see, that's a perfect Nicole. We want to speak to you. I want Nicole to call us. Absolutely, Nicole three two three two eight four seven eight two six. If you don't mind calling us, I will. Marla be will quiet. be nice. I'm gonna hold her to that. I'm gonna be quiet. And I'm going to let Dave, because Dave's voice is soothing. You know he's a fourth tenor in Take Six. It's soothing. That and makes me say, soothing. Get away, Jordan. Oh, See? how soothing is that? See? He'll, he'll, he'll sing to you. You and, call and, in. Well, Dave for the record, to Tony Fontana in the chat room says marriage has never really been about the piece of paper. And I agree. It's really about the commitment. It's just the it is simple until you un- get into a divorce the civil court. union in our in our, in the United States has turned it into a piece of paper. Bull but crap, Dave. Let's oh okay. If we're Lord gonna have, have a, if we're gonna Tony, bull crap, Tony, bull crap, Tony, bull crap, Dave. Tony, Tony, sweet, are you with me? It, Tony's eyebrows are up because he's like, why? What do you? Why? Did we can can we steal a phrase? Shut up. <laughs> anyway. Um, I, I, it, let's get, let's be real. It, the marriage itself is about the relationship, but the marriage experience now is about the legal implications of, of ownership, goods, divided belongings, possessions. It's all about the fine print. There's a, there's a piece of paper okay. that denotes way okay, further Marla, than the vows. Marla, Dave. Oh, you're making me exhausted. You know, 323-284-7826. Nicole, we want to hear from you. I want to know why Nicole says no, ma'am. I want to know. And I don't want you to write it down. 323-284-7826. And we are going to be right back. Six years of marriage from two unique perspectives equals 52 years of relationship experience. It's time for Ask Marla and Dave. Answers to your questions about life, love, and relationship based on Marla and Dave's real life experience. It's about to get real. Ask Marla and Dave. Before we, before Dave reads the Ask Marla and Dave, I want to remind everybody that you can always call us live during any show at 323-284-7826 or you can join us online Instagram and Twitter, both at, at at the M and A and D D show, or on Facebook, the Marlon Day Show. And last but not, certainly not least, there's always our direct website, which is www.marlondave.com. Dave, what's our Ask Marlon Dave? Ask Marlon Dave. Someone wrote in and said, "I'm 21 years old and madly in love with my boyfriend. We have been seriously considering getting married, and my family is freaking out." His parents are okay with his decision, but mine think that I'm way too young and need to experience life and other possibilities before I make a lifetime commitment to one man. I've been searching for examples of young love to counter their fears. I guess that what I really want to know is, do you feel I'm too young to get married? Hell Signed, yes! Young I'm sorry. love. Wait, wait, wait. Say, I'm sorry. Say, sign Signed me. young Hell love. Hell okay. yes! Or that could just be rude Marla. Uh, <laughs> I'll put it to you like this. I, I can't say that you're too young to get married, but I will say that uh, there are some challenges that are specific to getting married really young. Well, we got uh, married at 20 and 21, 20, uh, 22. We, were you 25? Dave's much older than me. Anyway, um, the bottom line is we got married very young. And I'll be honest with you, uh, anonymous person, uh, I would not do it again in this way. I would not get married at 20. And I'm going to also say I would not have a baby at 19. Those two things I can definitely say if I had to go back. I don't regret them because regret would mean that I did not love and cherish 
what I have and I do. But in the in the moment of making those decisions, I would never repeat them. Well, there you have it. Uh, for me, like I said, there's some challenges specific to getting married young. Finances are usually one of the main things. Uh, so make sure that you have those things on the table and you take a realistic approach. And don't just, you know, uh, poo-poo on your parents' advice. And, and you should wait because I didn't even come into my full bus size until 40. <laughs> so the, I just filled out fully. Yeah. So that's, that's why you should wait. Remember, uh, ask Marlon Dave. You can ask us anything. To ask us what's on your mind. 323-284-7826. Send us your comments to MarlonAndDave.com, and we'll answer right on air. Back to the show. Welcome back to the Marla and Dave radio show. Marla and Dave want to talk to you. Phone lines are open at 323-284-7826. 323-284-7826. Right away in the chat room, Sandra Hawkins, who's our official tennis scorekeeper. Thank you for your time and your um, dedication to that job, Sandra. Um, yes, you too would wait. She said she was, and I'll read directly her comment. She said, yes. I have to, I was 21 when I was, when I first got married and I was way too young and he was too. Now she's still married, but we, in retrospect, we can look back with our experiences inside of our marriages and say, and and you know, the thing about it is I want people to start sharing honestly and stop shying away from saying the truth because the truth in your mind may hurt somebody. I think we have a caller on the line though. Oh. Caller, go ahead. You're on with Marlon Dave. Hey guys! Hi, hey. it's Nicole. Hey, I'm Nicole. calling because you told me to. <laughs> Thank you, Nicole. It's, You're Nicole very obedient. Nicole is obedient. I like yeah. it. Nicole, can I ask how old you are? I'm thirty. Nicole, can you teach our children to be obedient? We we have such. I don't know if I'm obedient. I, I think I just do well doing my own thing. Well, you so you, know, I, you, you listened and called us, so we appreciate that. So, Nicole, no in the, Nicole, in the chat room, I'm going to jump right into it, if you don't mind. In the chat room, you were saying that you're not married and you have no plans to get married. Not right now. I'm really like, I mean, I'm the oldest of three kids by 10 years. So I've actually helped raise my sisters and my parents were divorced. So I'm 30. They're in college. I feel like I am newly, like, I have an empty nester kind of. Oh, so you like and the I'm super auntie. I'm enjoying my freedom as a single person who's in their 30s. Okay, so it's now amazing. that's one of the she things. That's amazing. That's what, that's one of the things that I was commenting on. It would seem like once you get to your thirties, I mean, you you start to enjoy your life so much that it'll be very difficult to add someone to that mix. Is that is that something that you're dealing with? Yeah, and also, I mean, I have a lot of friends who have are married and have kids or trying to have kids, and that's great. And I love being the auntie that can go and spoil their kids and leave. But kids have like a lifelong commitment. And I'm just not ready to commit to something for that long. I'm really trying to figure myself out and kind of get myself established a bit more before I even think of trying to bring other people into the mix. Nicole, you're so clear. Um, And this is Marla. I want to ask you this. Do you see an age right now for yourself where marriage would become something that you might either seek or be completely um, open to? Do you what age is that in your mind for you? I don't know if I have an age per se. I think it's just a matter of when I feel like I am comfortable with myself and that I am looking for someone that can kind of complement what I have going on. Because at this point, I'm doing well by myself and I don't need anybody else to take care of me. So it's just a matter of, I think, wanting just to have that companionship. And I, I don't know. I don't have a number in mind. I just will wait and see when that happens to me. But are, I'm, I'm are doing you, myself are you dating? as is. She will be now because you just described yourself as the perfect woman. I don't need you at all. <laughs> Sweet. Right. I'm in the garage watching TV. <laughs> <laughs> Honey, hold it down. <laughs> Are you dating right now, Nicole? I'm dating a little bit. I just finished grad school, so I'm just starting to see the light of day. As mm. I was buried in books for the last couple of years, so I'm starting to play the field a little bit. and It's, it's fun. It's summertime. I'm in New Jersey. You can actually go outside and not have to have clothes like bundled up. So it's wow. Wait, wait, Nicole, you, can go, wait, you can walk around naked in wait, New Jersey. Stop. Did you hear what she just said? That was <laughs> the perfect. At all, Dave. <laughs> that was the perfect trifecta, though. She just said, "Yeah, I'm sorry. You're about to get married tomorrow. Trust. I'm smart. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not. wealthy no, no, no. and I'm nude. Yes, there are so many men right now that are going to be lining up." <laughs> 
Fellas, slow Nicole, down. Nicole, you know don't if you move to a certain country, Marla, and you can be my wife. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's nice. That's nice. We'll see how Marla feels about that. I don't think she really feels the same way. I'll be, you know what, Nicole? If one goes out, then that, you know, who knows? Who knows? <laughs> So you're looking oh for a sister wives thing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dave is also trying to get into polygamy, I see. This is a new announcement. I didn't, I'm who knew? just wow. joking. I'm just joking. But no, Nicole, but right quick, you did say that part of your reason for not getting married was it seemed like you were combining having kids with marriage. It happens. It's a family. But I mean, you can, yeah. you can, you can get married and not have kids. That's true, but I feel like it kind of comes all together. Like, I'm a teacher, so I work with a lot of people that the second they get a teaching job, they settle down, and that's it. And that, to me, is terrifying. Like, I don't ever want to feel like I am forced to stay in a place for kids or for a relationship. I'm kind of just a free person that likes to go and travel and mm. stuff. And I don't know. I, I think it, kids kind of come with it. Well, kids are kind of an anchor. Personally, I, I think if I do settle down, I'd have kids shortly thereafter, and I just don't want to do that right now. Okay, fair enough. Well, Nicole, thank you so very much for calling us. That was a very, very insightful. Absolutely. Um, and we appreciate it. And thanks for no and thanks for tuning in to the Marlon Dave Show. Please be here oh, every Monday. You're welcome. All right, thank you. <laughs> Bye-bye. All right, you're welcome. Bye-bye. All right, Lisa Marion in the chat room says, uh, made her think of something, how the other person in the relationship is part of your shaping as you grow through adult maturity. I guess she's speaking about when you're when you get married young. Well, yeah, but I will say this, and I want to piggyback on Nicole. You know, that that perspective that she just mentioned is honestly, and I can say this, is my one envy right now in life because, you know, what I, what, here's the other thing I wish someone had told me. I wish someone had told me blank before I got married that kids are forever. And I don't mean they live forever. Your commitment, your sacrifice to care about them more than you care about yourself, even if you say that you're going to, you know, hardcore love, whatever you want to call it for, for the, for the connected parent, that child's well being will trump yours forever. So if they do not take and make certain choices and go down paths that will render them fully independent, you're in not for the long haul, but for the life haul. And that is what I didn't know. I wish someone had told me that. And then I would have ripped my uterus out (laughs) with my bare hands. I would have gotten the Hoover uh, extension, you know, that I could do it at home. Anyway, that's a little bit too much information. But the point that I'm really making is that's something I wanted to share with our audience that, and, and this is in all seriousness, that, you know, Dave, this is, and, and you, you're you very uh, empathetic hmm. to, this, to, the, to my plight, but my plight is, as the mother, as the woman, as the wife in the relationship, and in a traditional sense, um, I have not ever really had a chance to really be alone with myself. And that's where I struggle today. I'm here at hmm. 47 years old in a, in a dilemma because... The weight of the responsibility has gotten heavier, not lighter, because they're bigger with bigger issues and, you know, more responsibility. And I don't have that 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 time that Nicole was talking about, which I she said, you know, she's just seeing the light of day in her 30s. Well, I've never seen the light of day. I was a kid. Then I was a mom. Then I was a wife. And then I had then I was a mother to more kids and deeper into wifehood. So Dave has had a career and it, it's not like you know and, and it, I think it might be different if you had if David had given up in our in his life or in our marriage and said man I really want to be in this group take six but I got to keep laying bricks because my family needs to eat and you make and uh, and, and there are men who make right, that sacrifice that level of sacrifice but no, for true. you that is not the case we all support it you know, your 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 travels and your dreams and your whatever uninterrupted. So whatever you made of that was great. But for me, everything that I wanted to be and everything that I held on to, I suppressed it and I gave it all into the family and made the family first. And I'm at this point, I'm more than frazzled, you know, and, and this is real talk. Last night I was beside myself. You know, our son got got our car towed again for the third time with just mindless oh i par- i didn't realize it was a temporary tow away all kinds of stuff is well, happening well uh, hold on uh, okay go ahead Continue. so what i'm really saying is even though david you may have been there 
to to actually physically manage the situation, the whole weight of the situation, I'm never not there. So for me, um, and, and I have to share this, this is part of my view of of what tires me at this point about the whole concept of marriage, because for me, marriage has meant, um, you Sacrifice. know, full give up of myself right. to, to spot everybody else and watch everybody else do what they have to do and then decide how and with if and when I can pick up the pieces for myself. So I'm pretty spent right now. I, I mean, I'm and I'm not, I'm, you know. I'm not having a nervous no, breakdown, but no. kind of. I'm in flannel, and it's, it's hot outside. <laughs> Some stuff is happening right no, here. And, and it's we're happening. Not, we're not laughing or making light of, of your sacrifice. <laughs> I have because makeup it's on, true. you know. But it's true. You know, and I think I'm that pale like uh, Tony. Uh, it, it's, it's definitely uh, different. I don't think men can truly understand the sacrifices that women make to get into a relationship, only because, I mean, a, a man is born. He grows up if, uh, from a boy to a man, and he chooses his career and he does his thing. He keeps his name. A woman literally goes from being one man's daughter uh, with her with that man's name to uh, if she gets married, taking on somebody else's name. And, you know, it's really it's really difficult, I think, for women to to uh, 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 to hold on to that individuality. And especially when it comes to the concept of marriage, because most people feel like you have to give your all into a marriage. Um and I used to think the same thing. I think really you have to, it's better to hold on to a piece of yourself no matter what. Because if you don't do that, you're really not giving yourself to the relationship anyway. You're not there. And once you disappear, then that's going to be trouble for the relationship. And that's, a, that's just my take. Is it really, I mean, with all the, the thing I will say is this, um, and, I, and I like to speak in taglines. Uh, one, one thing I've learned that I want to share with our audience is I can say without a shadow of a doubt, and Tony, the first statement is for you because you're in the dating world. If you're dating, expect nothing. If you're married, expect change. Those are definite, definite things because I think that when you get married, you think that everything's going to have that, that feeling of the wedding. The wedding, if you can't think past the wedding, you're screwed. I'm just telling you because life is not about that moment. Life is 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 stress. I even say all the time and I'm a tagline person, you know, they say the dead know nothing. Well, well, n nothing is peace. The minute that you are conscious, there is actual resistance. Life is resistance. It's going through this this resistance that how you know you're living. If you re encounter no resistance, then guess what? <laughs> you know, if everything looks paranormal, then you're either on Tony's show or you're dead. <laughs> and if you're on Tony's show, uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> By the way, if Tony asks you to co-host, be careful. Um, this is a side joke. Dave. Yes, Marla? Back to the show. <laughs> <laughs> if you insist. Uh, there's a lot of interesting things going on in the chat room. Uh, amongst other things, Sandra said uh, that her second marriage, uh, her husband is now her best friend, and it's really just a blessing to her and I think she touched on something that is a strong foundation for any good relationship uh, specifically for a marriage and that is friendship because those ooh goo goo gaga feelings and the let's have sex all the time those things will go out the window you will not have sex all the time when you get married yeah you know what else I you know I've been I've been and, and that goo goo gaga feeling and yeah much to my chagrin trust but uh that goo goo gaga, gaga feeling I keep saying that will definitely go out the window too passions come and go that super i'm into you all the time feeling that person's going to get on your nerves uh just like anybody else that you live with 24 hours seven days a week um will eventually get on your nerves and the marriage is a commitment and i think people need to really seriously understand that marriage is not a feeling marriage is a commitment and commitment is something that transcends emotional experience so i think that's something that uh, Sandra touched on that's very important. And Lisa is saying in the chat room, and I want to address this, she says, Marla, mine are si uh, 13, 17, and 20. I'm 51. I'm just now getting ready to launch the performing part of my career, which has been on hold for all of those years. So you can still find you. I can find me. Um, but unfortunately, Lisa, and again, I, this is where it gets 
fun for me because I, I don't know how to do anything but have real talk and be completely transparent. My situation is still so demanding um, with with the issue of um, at least one of our children that it, it's it's not possible because and when I say it's not possible, it's possible in small increments. But the minute you get going, you know, it, it, there's we're always kind of coming to a situation in, in our family where there's only going to be one parent present and that parent is me. So I've I've given up um, career after career, you know, get gotten my momentum and my steam up and had to step back. And, you know, the discussions in our marriage sound like this. <sighs> well, honey, I, I, I mean, I, I, I see what you're saying and I get it. But, you know, I make, you know, the only way that we earn money is that I go out on the road with the group. And if I'm out on the road with the group, say no more, because in reality, I'm not an irrational woman. And that's true. So with that truth means that I have to step back and fall back in line to what it is that um, is necessary to be done. And there is no end date yet for me as to when that will happen. It'll be a miracle. That's how I really feel. I feel like it's a miracle. And I keep, I move forward in hope, but I, it's been, like I said, almost 30 years. And for me, it hasn't necessarily it shifted, but it has not been lifted. I'll I'll be honest with you. It was really my naivety that uh, made a couple of the initial mistakes about us getting married as young as we did, and that really was Marla actually already had a child. So I'm thinking that Marla's already in mother mode. You know what I mean? Uh, I knew from day one I, I love kids. As a matter of fact, for me, I would have had a a Duggar full of kids but dave wasn't born with a uterus <laughs> so he didn't get that option keep on Dave. but but uh uh so i assume that marla it's was a dugger, it's a in, in in mother mode <laughs> uh and ready you know for family um so that was like hey that's that's awesome uh and i it, like i said i was naive because just because someone has a child doesn't mean that they're ready for that to be their life um, even though I still feel it's a strange thing for me because I don't want to uh, put you in a box, so to speak. But we both agree that once you do have children, that that's a lifetime commitment. And let's say this. Let's again, in the spirit of, you know, Marlon, Dave, real talk. Um, that's a good point. Plural and singular is what we're discussing at this moment. Once I had a baby. By the way, when when I got pregnant with my my oldest daughter, which you know her father and I, which Dave is Monisa's stepfather, even though he raised her, when when he and I were decided to have this baby, I was I was nineteen weeks pregnant, and any 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 option wasn't an option for me personally. I'm just gonna say that, um, but but you don't know what you know till you know it, and I, that again sounds crazy, but. Having this baby, and it was a huge adjustment, but once I, I understood, I was clear, this is what motherhood is. And I was very good, Dave, at communicating to you, less weight. because It wasn't never, but it was less weight. I was 19. I delivered Monice at 19, and once we got married, I said, you know what? My dad's still willing for me to pay for college. Let me go back to school because one child is going to be a lot different than two, three, four, a house full of kids, which will make me a career parent. So I don't think you under I always spoke up. I don't think you understood at that moment. So I want you to answer that um, when we come back, because it's it. That was really what was on the table. Hmm. And you you really just wanted what you wanted. And, you know, we both like sex. You know, we were doing a lot and stuff. So it kind of just happened that way. But we, we'll enough. deal with that. Fair enough. We'll be right back. It's time for the Marla and Dave Doghouse. Dog Marla has something that should put Dave in the doghouse. Dave has something that should put Marla in the doghouse. You decide who gets a biscuit and who gets busted and ends up in the doghouse. Dog All right, Marla, why, why should I be in the doghouse? You should be in the doghouse because every time that I have an issue, no matter when it is in the month, I'm mm. sick and tired of Dave assigning PMS to my whole life's dilemma. Dave has a penis and a scrotum. It's one scrotum, right? Not two? two scrotum. Two, yeah, scrotum. <laughs> I have several scrotums. <laughs> Dave has multiple scrotums and one penis. 
They have different uses. And it's not attached to his ovaries because he doesn't Don't have any. <laughs> no. <laughs> Dave does not have a vagina, and so therefore. Anyway, so what are you saying? I'm really today when I said, man, I just feel I just feel out of sorts. Well, you know, you know, what it will in ten days your period's gonna start. It's everything. If I miss one thing on the grocery list, it's that it's all about Starla. my period. Let stop. Am I usually right? Be stop. honest. Am I usually okay, right? Okay, let's let's talk. Am I usually right? That's a yes or no. Sometimes that happens. But what I'll say is this: everyone write down the day. Okay, you say it'll be when in ten days. Yeah, within ten days. Yeah. Okay, we're now betting on my period. Okay, so then if if when my period comes, do you, you have the over or the under? To, if, the, <laughs> <laughs> if you go over, you lose. Bottom line. The bottom line is it sometimes don't diminish my issues. You're in the doghouse right now in my book hmm. because everything and you it minimizes my dilemma when you make everything about PMS. How about uh, how about okay. man mantral? Uh, uh, I say Marla goes in the doghouse because, and this is going to seem trivial compared to what she just said. So, but Marla didn't start actually posting our tennis scores until she started winning. Ah, shut up. When she was losing, it was always you know, the the point of the day was something that she did. The one the one shot that she did that was so incredible that was the highlight of the whole day. Maybe so. But now, right she now she starts you're a winning. Loser. Now she starts winning a, a set here and there. And suddenly, Did you, just you know, she's got to post that to the world and say, you know, we're Dave and I are pretty evenly matched. And no, I, I'm actually better than you at this point because I can actually wait and work a point. We've been in four are weeks of a push. Are you seriously no, saying that I'm you're a better tennis one. strategist than I am? No, I'm not a better strategist, but right now I'm a better implementer, and that wins the game. So anyway, again, you decide who goes to the doghouse. You see what I mean? You see what I mean? Marla's saying that, and she's the loser for this week already. But yes, she's we, saying she's better. The week's not over. You can't say loser for the week. Anyway, Marla goes in the doghouse. Tony, Tony's already saying that I go in the doghouse. Because what? you can't blame everything on my vagina well, or my period. Tony well, doesn't appreciate well, that. Well, Sandra just said, yeah, you're right, Dave. Anyway, so you guys guys continue to weigh in and we'll get right back to the show what what what's the action you laugh <laughs> you learn huh? you learn mm -hmm. you'll get mad oh, God. shut up you'll get happy <laughs> but you won't be bored this is the marla and dave radio show on the universal broadcast network <laughs> wait a minute how come in the chat room nicole said you probably didn't post the old scores because you were on your period <laughs> Oh, my goodness. That's funny, Nicole. Shouldn't mess with the lady who's bleeding. She can get pretty <laughs> vicious. But anyway, you were you were asking me something before we went to the break. We what I was saying to you before we went break. to the doghouse break is this. Um, I was, you know, some of the things that you that you, you mentioned, I agree. However, you didn't take my, what I was telling you seriously. No, it's true. Because and I told you emphatically how I felt. Well, let me say this. We got married March 25th Wait a and minute. you laid on the whole baby thing all the way through until we got pregnant with our son, which is November of our first year of marriage. And it literally was I felt like I was being worn down like waterboarded because you guys were you guys kept well, it was wasn't my penis like a board. I, I was, what are you was, saying? It was yeah. It was like was the water really? No. It wasn't the penis. It was like like constant eject, just <laughs> till it wore my skin. No, no. And again, that's I I attribute tribute that to my youth and my naivete. And let me say this: it's also because at the time you have to admit that you said a lot of things passionately at that time. Yes, no. So. In the middle of, you know, a lot of high intense conversation, you did say that. I have to admit, you did say that loud and clear. And I lumped it in with all of the other extremely intense things that you can't. That's your you problem. You, don't, that you need to stop interpreting. And in the meantime, and it's true. It, uh, you're my my feeling like that you were the superior um, logical opinion at the time in our marriage resulted in a child. Period. And once I had, and I said to you then, but wait a minute. Once we see, see what you just another said, another child, which was the issue because w at the time, what I said to you is, we. But have, you said my feeling like you were the. Hold on. What? I said we have one baby, and she's a novelty. And right now, there's no shortage of responsible family and caring people in our lives that are. Matter of fact, we had to say no. You're not watching her this week. We want to have our own baby. And I said, once I have another one, it the novelty goes out the window, and then you just become a parent. 
two is is wow. is one thing. And, and when I and say, see, for me, I still I, that no, still causes was, me to say, wow, that okay, concept alone is just like, wow, really. But it was true. What we had to do, what what I proved to you was the point. In other words, you become a career mom. At it, it, I can still balance one. Once I have two, the kids are my job. Even your accountant at the time said, man, we, we got pregnant with Lexi. I'm not sure why your wife is working at, at sh not having a career. She's making whatever money she's making being a teller at a bank is going on to top of your income and putting you in a different tax bracket. And by the time she pays for daycare for two kids, has to have clothes to wear to the bank and eats food and does whatever it takes for me to actually maintain a job, we were in the hole technically for your salary. For my salary. Yeah. So the bottom line is it was like stop sending your kids to school to a to daycare, wait for them to go to regular you elementary school. You have more money that you take home. Yes, and, right. and just let your wife become the wife. Just let her stay home. And that was an actual conscious decision. So what I'm really saying to you is I was right, and that's still the case. I had to settle into a new understanding and a new paradigm of what my position was and my job was, but it was always in contradiction to my personality. But that's the sacrifice, and that's the point of this that I'm making. You have to have these conversations clearly and succinctly and believe what someone is telling you. Tony, believe what somebody is telling you because that has become the fracture well, in in our communication. Well, that that actually is is part of the issue as well because we were having this conversation married. That's a conversation that we. I probably didn't say we would have never had. have kids. I said <clears throat> we should wait. Look, Dave, I had a baby at nineteen, a baby at twenty-one, and a baby at twenty-four. Who in the chat room can say that they had, were a full-time mom by the age I wasn't even twenty-five? When I look at our kids right now, Lexi DJ's twenty-five. I was a mother of three children at his age right now, and I still have to go home and make a grocery list and bring him cereal. And Lexi's twenty-two, so I had two kids at Lexi's age and three kids at DJ's age. Insane. I thought I was grown, but now I realize I was a fool. <laughs> well, Lisa Marion in, in the chat room says, I hear you, Marla. Uh, um, she has one child with autism, and her husband, uh, though not on the road, works a full-time day job and gigs on the weekends as well, pretty much leaving her at home all the time. Her job is a full-time, one thing, one job, 24-7. Lisa, I want you to call me right quick because I'd like to ask you a couple of questions as well if you have time. 323-284-7826 um, because she... Because and, and what, what she's really saying is that the load shifts on the shoulders of a man from time to time based on what he's doing at that particular time, whether he's at work or whether he's doing something else on the weekend. But for the mother, the load is just there. Constantly. Yeah. Right. And so and then not only that, the load is there. And then, you know, especially for years and years and years, we carry the load and then we pleasure you. And it was, you know, you you don't even want basic stuff. You want it like you wanted me to use my full athletic prowess. Well, you wanted to stay in shape. I can't help that. You that, want, that was, they wanted that was, me I was sacrificing the, for you. Yeah, you, when it came time for us to do circus sex, Dave, you didn't want it. I, I was going to jump off the dresser. No, you were trying to kill me. <laughs> Why do you think I had to have multiple scrotums? Maybe. <laughs> in case you ruin one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Anyway, no, what I wanted to ask, and Lisa can answer this in the chat room if she doesn't, if she doesn't have time or can't call us. Um, is there anybody out in, in Marla and Dave land who aspired to be a mom and that they, they really because I do know we do have a friend and because she's not here to represent her health self I'll leave her nameless but that's all she ever wanted and it was so no matter how hard economically or financially uh, whatever financial situation that she and her family found themselves in it was she was unfazed she was so geeked to be a mom that it didn't even matter four kids later it's like this is just the best thing ever we can just all stay in a bunk bed. We'll just get, you know, one big one on the bottom and four kids on the top and we'll all be good in one room in yeah, a box. That's, yeah, I don't know. That's that's strange. Well, I'm just saying there are some people who, who live for that. Well, let's let's get to another caller. Caller, go ahead. You're on the air with Marla and Dave. Hey, this is Lisa. Hey, Hi, Lisa. Lisa. How are you? 
oh, this is crazy because it's like uh, I'm watching the video and the time is like shifted here. Oh yeah, you gotta you gotta mute your uh, computer while we're actually on the phone. I'm just gonna throw got you. Got it, off. got it. I can't even can't watch you guys. I'm getting all confused. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't look at us. Don't look. Look away. Look away. <laughs> um, okay, so Lisa, my question is, which is what I was asking, um, is it was. You have three children, right? 13, mm -hmm. 17. Yep. Remind us of their ages. 13, 17, 20? Yep. Okay. So you have a 13-year-old, a 17-year-old, and a 20-year-old. Mm -hmm. Did you and your – was this an aspiration for you to be a full-time stay-at-home mom? Was this, was this part of the planning that you and your husband made together? No, it's 180 degrees the opposite wow. of what our plan was. Um, I, both of us had college degrees. Um, he went back for a second degree. Um, both of us have degrees in music. He went back for a second degree, which was an associate's degree, and then came out into a career as a land surveyor, um, kind of by default. Um, I went right into a career as a school music teacher, and then um, had our children while I was still teaching, took a year off with one of them, and then went back to teaching part-time. But the second one, the 17-year-old, is the one with autism. And when that came along, that just derailed all of life. Hmm. Uh, and like you say, kids are for life, and you just don't know what they're going to bring to the table. And that certainly wasn't in, in the plan, you know, in the big picture of things. So that derailed me for about 10 years, um, at which time he went back. And I should mention, he actually stayed at home with our first child for two years as hmm. a dad at home. Wow. Because... Financially, what my job as a teacher in Connecticut, salaries went up at that time. My job was a better paying job than the one that he had out in the industry when the construction industry was going down mm -hmm. and working for a surveying firm didn't make sense. So we actually flipped roles for two years. Um, then when the special needs child came along, I came back home. Um, and he had to go back out and kind of rebuild his career, which has rebuilt to a very nice place. And then just four years ago, I went back out to working full-time. I had worked like half a day a week for nine years um, and just did mom at home other than that. And then just went back out to full-time teaching um, four years ago. So it's been quite, you know, kind of up and down and up and down um, a lot more than I represented in the chat room. Hmm. But definitely has not been the path. I was definitely the career set person who was going to have a baby and six weeks later be back to work and, and all that. And no, 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 no. I, how, I didn't really want to go back. How long? I was how, okay with it. How long have you been married, Lisa? 27 years coming up. Okay. Wow. So they're just like us. Just like us, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We were married in June. You guys in March, us in June. Yep, okay, so year. Lisa, I do have a question. Now, do you think um, that a lot of women go through those changes where they have certain life plans, but is it part of being a woman that kind of derails those plans? Because, and I don't want to sound like a chauvinist pig. No, no, uh, no, I'm not hearing you that way. No. Uh, but hmm, as we have a, on different headphones. People say that women, <laughs> people... <laughs> People say, excuse Marla, people say that women sort of have this internal clock that kind of will take them off that uh, career path anyway, because at a certain age, they feel the need to have children. Do you, do you think that's something that plays into it a little bit? I, I mean, I think it can. Um, you know, we were 30 when we got pregnant with our first child, and or I was 30. And I definitely, we got married, you know, and it was seven years before we had baby number one. Mm -hmm. And for me, one goal for me was to have my master's degree done. So I guess if I think about, Marla, what I wrote earlier, I did get an opportunity to establish myself in a certain mm -hmm. way, even though I didn't get to continue it nonstop, because I had my college degree and I got my master's and had established myself in my career as a teacher before I started to build a family. So that is a little bit different than what I was kind of projecting on the message board. I didn't mean to be, you know, misrepresent, but no, no, no. I guess when I think about it, you know, I did really get to ha kind of establish myself. But then when the second child came in, it was clear that I was going to need to stop everything. That was tough. That right. was a very difficult year to say, wow, I've built all this and now what? Um, and then later I had another situation where, I had a vocal injury that derailed me as a singer and a music teacher. 
So I guess I've had a couple of big derailments that have said you don't get to do what you want to do. Yeah. Yeah. Lisa, you know? hang, hang tough for one second because there's a question being directed at you from the chat room since it's not in, in uh, real time. It says, Lisa, how was your husband's experience as a stay-at-home dad? Sandra Hawkins wants to know. And she also says, did he enjoy it or was he looked down on by other men? Well, because it was right about, at the, it was 1995, so it was right around the time when more more guys were starting to do that, but definitely not in his generation or like his cousins or people that he knew. So he was he was unique for sure. But the relationship that he was developed that he developed and maintains with our daughter, I, he wouldn't give that up in a heartbeat. And he adjusted to it well. He's much more orderly um, than I am, much more organized. So he probably did a better job with all of that part of the management. Mm. Um, he, we live close to where I work, so he brought the baby to work in the middle of the day, every day for nursing. It was like the wait, most wait. perfect situation that, that you could have. You know, so at my lunch break and everything to, fell in the middle of the day, he would bring I still got to be mom. He would bring your child to your mm-hmm. job for breastfeeding? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, and, you, wow. and Lisa, let me explain to you where you just became. Your, your family now just has just become I Dave's love personal that. hero. Yeah. <laughs> David, David. It was really cool the way, well, being a music teacher in the middle of the day, that's the time when all the kids are at lunch or recess in an elementary school, so you don't have classes then. So my planning time would be next to my lunch. So he'd bring the baby, I'd get my baby time, which made me happy. And then he'd, he'd get a chance to go just get a break, not a long, but a half hour, get a chance to have a school lunch, which was great. Then he'd come back. He'd, you know, uh, change her, put her down for a nap, have a little bit of time to himself. Um, and then I would come home and, and things, you know, we would kind of shift jobs a little bit. He did work some part-time work in the evenings during those years. But, you know, we just kind of, we did shift it around, you know. But, it, yeah, it was, it was really an awesome thing to be able to do that. Well, well Lisa, Lisa, thanks for calling number one. And, and thanks and for supporting the Marlon and Dave show. We, we enjoy yeah, yeah, we, yeah. we We want all of our listeners to know as well that this is really what we're all about. We, we love to, this is not, we don't want to, we didn't set the Marlon Dave show up to talk at people. We love to share and exchange. So we appreciate you calling us and thanks for, for being a mad supporter. Yeah, sure. Thanks so much. All right. Thank you, Lisa. Bye-bye. David, here's the thing. You, she, see how she enjoyed that? I'm going to tell our audience and tell Tony, Dave was a a breastfeeding fool, fanatic, advocate. I would be on the toilet and Dave would break in the locked door and he's okay. (laughs) Or I'd be sleeping and he would diaper the baby, walk the baby, and then the next thing you know, I would have someone sucking on me. So you have to include in... (laughs) Right, Dave. Dave, (laughs) nurse. Me and the baby. You have to include... Uh, in there that Marla and I were practical jokers. So half of that was really not something that was just like, you have to do this. It was very funny. You have to admit, honey, just, you just Marla sleep, was so I'll mad hook him up. that I had to laugh. <laughs> now the sleep, I'll hook him up thing. I thought I was doing you a favor, to be honest. Here, just let somebody hang on your breast. It'll be fine. You, you just, you look. Young, <laughs> naive. I'm sorry. I'm t- sorry. T- I'm afraid. Tony got a little starry-eyed. I, <laughs> I don't know if I should ask him that question. That's supposed to be something he goes, what? As a side note, before we go before we go to a break, as a side note, I will tell you this, that it looks like I'm going in the doghouse. Yep. That uh, makes Nicole, perfect sense. Nicole cast the deciding vote because we were tied. And Nicole says, everything it's not about the period. Yeah. Don't trivialize a woman's issues. Now, I will say this, uh, Nicole, and all the, all the other women like out there. To cramp, I, to I'm bleed, sorry. To most go, men, to most men can't get, can't say it like this, but I might as well since I'm already in the doghouse. I'll, I'll speak for all Dave, the men. Don't make me throw my phone across the. Everybody room. knows. Most men know that not every everything that you get mad at when you're P- in PMS mode, it's real. I really did mess up, and you really do deserve to be angry. But if it wasn't PMS, you'd be like, what's, what's your problem? Ha-ha, <laughs> let's go play tennis. When it's PMS, it's, I hate you, I'm going to cut your head off. I didn't it, threaten it, to it cut just, his head <laughs> off, but he does have an extra pair of uh, extra scrotum. So yeah, that's, I keep an extra scrotum around just for occasions like that's this. That's the very Trust. one that I could, <laughs> that I could you know, smack around. <laughs> anyway. it's, a, it's a dummy scrotum. Anyway, we'll be right back. It's time to play the Marla and Dave love game. 
Here are Marla and Dave to explain Let's how tell, it works. Tell Tony Fontana. Tony, call us right now. We want you to be one of. The, we want you to be <laughs> a participant in the Mad Love Game. Tony Fontana, come on down. Or maybe Sandra Hawkins can call as well. Sandra Hawkins said she doesn't want to talk to you. She's just a scorekeeper. She doesn't want to talk to Tony. Anyway, the Mad Love Game is a game created by Marla and me. Uh, it has three categories, and they are the main categories that every relationship has to rely on for success. That's sex. I said sex. Uh, communication and finance. It's played by rolling a single die. The die has those categories on it, as well as the Marla and Dave logo. If you land on the logo, it's wild. You can choose sex as much as you want. Or you can really choose whatever category you want. <laughs> <laughs> don't let me influence you. Anyway, Dave, I, I, you Marla, don't need to be anywhere near Vegas anytime <laughs> soon because I'm starting to actually worry about you. Tony, could you pass this to Marla so she can roll the die? I'm waiting because I think that we're going to. I want Tony to call in and play the game with us. And okay, I told well, him until to come then, down. go ahead and roll. I can't because it won't be authentic if I roll in representation of Tony. We'll roll again when Tony. No, when Tony, you 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 just want to. No, you can't make me. That's true. Is this true. PMS? Do you think this is how? This well, is someone's how? calling in. I think your PMS rant is uh, has a caller on the, the line. Call. Hi, caller. Is this Tony? <laughs> Yes, this is Tony. Hi, Tony. Uh, you see that I waited for How you. you Dave tried to make me roll the dice prematurely. Shame on you, Dave. Tony's going to play with us. Oh, how's Paula? Oh, Paula's great. Tell her I ask about her. All right, you ready? Tony, what's up? Marla's going to yeah. roll for you, and then you get to go for it. Here you go. Because it's not authentic if I pre-roll it. Oh. Tony, Says, lose okay. a turn. <laughs> That's just, this is what Marla does for you. Okay, You've Tony, lost Tony, a turn. Tony, no, no. Tony, now you get to roll. <laughs> Tony, Tony Sweet is going to roll for you. Oh, it's a it's wild. It's wild, so you Tony. You get to choose. Sex, money, or communication. communication. Uh, um, I'm having some issues with communication. Let's go with communication. Okay, uh, Tony. Um, if Dave would tell you that that you could communicate much better during sex, Tony, the, that's true. Him. Tony, have sex and then have ask, get all your questions answered. Anyway, the question for you, Tony, is who talks to friends about the relationship more, men or women? Um, well, I would say women, but I'm probably wrong. I don't talk to anyone about my relationship much. Mm -hmm. Well, Tony, uh, it, you represent men very well because the answer is women. And again, the answers come from the PEW Research Center. But here's a further discussion question for you, Tony. Uh, what information should never be shared by a man or a woman about their relationship? Um, problems, like if you're having problems, you should never share problems that you're having or anything negative hmm. about your spouse. I think I made a mistake, Tony. I think I should have <laughs> never said that Dave has an extra scrotum. The world didn't need to know that. <laughs> it was horrible. Sorry, Dave. I apologize. Well, you know, it's, it's hanging out there now. So anyway. You go to the uh, circus with that thing, Dave. Make us some extra money. Tony, here's another discussion question that I just popped into my mind. What if you're... What if you're wife's friend was another dude and she's since it says women talk to their friends about relationship and she's just talking about your relationship with another guy he just told you how well, would you it's interesting yeah it's interesting Dave because my wife Paula has two best friends one is female and one is male uh, I don't really ask much about what they talk about because right. to me I'm not really um, I'm, I think that's private for her. Right. right. And uh, she doesn't show, she doesn't behave in uh, in a way that would cause me to think that uh, anything was inappropriate. Mm -hmm. I know that he, sh I know that he shares with her her his relationship issues, but more to get a more to get a female perspective. Yeah. And I and I think he does it because they both he trusts her that he sh that she's not going to share mm -hmm. his business. So, and and that's really well, a big it, thing. I, I appreciate that in Tony and Paul's relationship that absolutely the trust is really with your spouse, and he's also looking at her behavior, which would denote because if you're inappropriate, you're inappropriate, David. I have a male friend who is really kind of a friend of the family, and that's all he ever wants is for to when he gets in a tight relationship situation 
he's right over to our house chatting about his his dilemmas that's and he'll true. talk to both pretty, of us pretty chatty that's true yeah uh, i mean if you walk up it's not like anything changes it's, it's a very platonic relationship well tony thanks for calling in and thanks for playing the mad love game and please hug and kiss you your bet. wife I for us you guys. oh man we love you, you bet. see you all right bye tony see dave that's you need more patience i knew yeah. that tony would come through and he would call because you know what tony's are dave tony's are strong and tony's are consistent and tony's are great for co-hosting <laughs> okay well you've heard it here on the marlon dave show go tony's back to the show <laughs> i never do anything without thinking about it first marla is a feeler i basically wear my personality on my sleeve but when marla and dave get together it's like a match dancing with a firecracker. This is the Marla and Dave Radio Show on the Universal Broadcast Network. All right. Uh, the poll question last week it's was... It's poll time. See? I jumped right in. Like you didn't do last time. Anyway... Because you I, you said you were going to write us a remix. I was waiting on the remix. I didn't say nothing about no remix. I said we needed a remix. Anyway, the poll question was, <laughs> is prestigious private university tuition, yes, all of those adjectives, worth the financial investment? Uh, and the options were yes, hashtag it's job security, and no, hashtag debt over degree. Didn't quite understand that hashtag, but um, most people voted no. Right. And that we had a good expensive. level of participation as well, and so most people said no. It's uh, too expensive and it's not worth it. Okay, this week, this is what you will be voting on. Should a marriage proposal be gender neutral? Should who who should ask? Who pops the question? Men or women? Is it should it just be either or? So no, it's his move to make. Or yes, it's a neutral question. <sighs> gender neutral. Hmm. Well, hey, well, in my world, I guess the you can question be, everything. My my. I'm gonna tell you this right now. I'm gonna, in your world, it better be gender neutral. No, it's not. It's no. It's his. It's his move to make. Huh? I would think that in my because first of all, you the person who shatters all stereotypes and I don't. You're never gonna know me, Dave. Stop trying. Yeah, I guess so. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> what haven't you learned in 27 years? I'm always different. You see this hair? I'm a I'm a blonde Asian woman, according to Tony. With this hair, you never know. Anyway, the bottom line is, no, I mean, I'll just tell you guys up, right up front, because I think that there's something about a man, what it says about a man's commitment to love you and to cherish you for him to take the initiative in, and popping the question. So I would say it's his move to make. In, and I'm going to say this, in a heterosexual relationship, because I don't really know how it works in, in outside of that. So it's true because I have to say that this is basically if only there were two based women, on there would be no or two. Ask. Oh, there you go, or or two men. So there, you know, you it would be that would be a dumb. The whole poll question might be dumb. I probably <laughs> should just do it over again. <laughs> anyway, oh Marla, don't be down on yourself. Oh, it's that God. hair again. See, so you're second oh, guessing God. yourself because the person who's here you're wearing Why? used to second guess themselves. Why? Stop channeling her. Why? <laughs> Anyway, you can catch the poll question on the website, www.marlanddave.com, right there on the front page. Can you handle the truth? This is modern American dialogue in a mad world from two unique, fresh, transparent perspectives. This is the Marla and Dave Radio Show. Okay, uh, Marla is definitely losing it over <laughs> here. Uh, she did say that at the beginning of the show, and I guess we should believe her. But she, you she's know what we're literally gonna do? throwing things around the studio. I'm, you're supposed to throw a die. And Nicole, uh, in, the, in the chat room, Nicole said uh, to your Tony's comment, they're great. <laughs> she said she's getting punchy, too. <laughs> Love it. Nicole, join me in my, in my rebellious rant and just my punchy... I don't know. <laughs> Dave. You know, I think, Marla, you might have summed up summed it up best when you said, when you get married, expect change. If you are willing willing to adapt. Uh, okay, now you're, what are you, poo-pooing on? <laughs> Marla is losing it, officially. Anyway, but I do think that's a strong statement. And, uh, yeah, there you have it. Dave, give us your three best tips for longevity in a relationship, in a marriage. Uh, have a great sense of humor. 
uh, be willing to let it go. Don't hold on and do not blame. Do not play the blame game. My best three tips are... Um, and doggy style. We said three. Did we say three? Oh, that's a close four. You're in your 40s, Dave. <laughs> and if somebody else is out there in their 40s, people in their 40s have bad knees. Most or or maybe... Know. Doggy you know, style might not be an option. Uh, Get a the, book on 101 positions, but stay away from everything that re- involves joint pressure. There's, There you go. That's not it. For me, my... And Tony Fontana said daily. Doggy style daily. I like that. Number one, I think that you should find uh, the the foundation of your friendship first. Um, number two, I think that you should be willing to fully spend the amount of time without demands that it takes for you to love and accept the person for truly who they are and that that works for you. Um, number three, uh, if you have a uterus, don't use it to have children until you're at least 50. Take the Sarah route. Pray later on down the line. Get pregnant at 67. No, I'm just kidding. Um, it, Good luck. The, the <laughs> at three, I would really say, you know, family planning on a serious tip. Yeah, for sure. Would be huge because the the life of your relationship depends on the stability and um, independent health of who you are first before you can extend that to the ones that you love um yeah and i would say this that when i said have a great sense of humor that speaks to friendship as well because that's a big part of friendship so yeah and just know that you know there's there's always mad match and so right now i'm scouring the country and i'm going to find someone suitable for my friend tony sweet (laughs) so if you want to contact me privately I would like to send you on a date with Tony Sweet. That's the that's I want I want to just advertise that. What's wrong with me today? I have no idea, but I want to thank you guys for putting me in the doghouse. Can Tony? Can you turn your mic? I'm up just going to kind of re uh, <laughs> rearrange my doghouse, put a big screen in there, and watch some playoffs. Tony, yeah, what right what is the what is the one uh, re, the the best experiential advice that you could give um, on a relationship tip? The one thing, if I had to say, fill in your blank. You would not forgiveness. Forgiveness. There's a word for you. That's a great one, Tony. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. <laughs> now you see why his mic needed to be on. I knew Tony was holding a nugget, and I needed him to share that nugget with you. This is the altar call right now. <laughs> if you're thinking about getting married, think about everything we've said in the last one minute, and apply that to a relationship on a real tip, and 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 make it work, make it last. Okay, next week. This is. I want to just do this. There you go. Okay, Next wow. week. Wow. And you think <laughs> that I'm exaggerating house. when I say PMS? I shouldn't be in this doghouse. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. <laughs> in the madhouse. <laughs> you see? <laughs> Next week. I wasn't There's one playing. for you. There's one for you. There's one for you. There's one for you. <laughs> Next week in the madhouse. Um, I have to do this this week. And I love it. Dave, we need to have more time alone. Because I agree. You, okay. It's like a it's like a, a a Chinese fortune cookie. Next week we 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 have we have Sean Stockton <laughs> yeah, in bed at the end of that. Sean Stockton. Dave, need to spend more time alone in bed. Okay, that's enough, Dave. <laughs> Next time you eat, Dave. get a fortune cookie. Put in bed on the end of the fortune. It makes for Dave, some fun <laughs> little he, anecdote. He who doesn't understand PMS. Shh. <laughs> Next week we have we're welcoming Sean Stockton Stockton. From Boys to Men, he Absolutely. and his wife here into the doghouse. I mean, to the madhouse. Whoa, we're gonna. They're gonna be here as our guests. I'm Dave. If we could get a piece of music, who do we have to call? Mark. I'm Wanye. gonna get Sean to bring in some of their new music. I'll ask him if he's gonna yeah. be willing to do that. That'll be great. So we're looking forward to, to that, and you should all be looking forward to it too. There's this this month in the doghouse. We have a lot of exciting things. We have Shamar Moore on our schedule for for the twentieth, the twenty second. Um, <laughs> Lee Lacey, we yeah, have. Boy. Um, coming up, we have our dads that are going to come on, 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 don't miss that on, uh, on Monday, the 15th to honor for them for Father's Day. And we want to hear what it is like for our fathers to have raised such stellar, incredible children, at least my dad. And you'll also get to see Marla and I play the dozens when we hang up on our fathers and actually talk. (laughs) <laughs> joke each other's father right there on the air right so, here on the air so tomorrow don't forget put it in your calendar don't don't miss mad monday be here in the madhouse six o'clock p.m to 7 30 p.m every monday is mad monday and there's not a monday that goes by that it's not mad absolutely so and thank you all for participating thank you sandra thank you tony thank you nicole 
thank you, Lisa. Thank you, everybody, for calling in, for listening, for writing, for seeing, for sitting, for standing, for walking. And for putting me in the doghouse. Anyway, it's, do- a ma- it's a mad world out there. And we're always here to talk about it. Absolutely. Woof! That's for Dave. next week. Eat those biscuits, boy. No. Oh,